What's going on everyone? Welcome to the Warehouse Series. Today we're going to be getting to some more Discord pictures. Uh, so let's get right to it guys. So the first one I want to talk about is I talk about all the time is once you get a solid base and then from there on up you can call them stack and that's what this person did. Uh, I don't, you really can't tell about the uh, plastic pallets here but if your warehouse has the plastic pallets uh, you know just remember Whatever the block is on a wooden pallet necessarily does not mean it's going to fit on a block that's on a plastic pallet. The surface is a little bit smaller, so just keep that in mind when you're building on plastic. But with that being said, these are perfectly done. Now, I say when I have a full pallet, I like to have about a waist-high solid uh, pallet, and then you could call them stack on top of that. This person uh, looks like maybe about a 50Q pallet. So perfectly done. Nice two solid layers down here, and then they call them stacked on top of that. Like I said, very nicely done. Same with this picture right here, same person. Uh, we got two uh, you know, solid layers down here, some gaps in there, but what did they do? They threw that blast, uh, plastic piece that you guys have in your warehouse that I wish we had in our warehouse. And then on top of that, we got ourselves a nice solid foundation and we call them stack on top of that. Two very nice dairy pallets, even though they're not big, they're very nicely done. All right guys, on this next picture right here, we got a meat pallet. And uh, I'm not a fan of having gaps. I'm not a, fit, a fan of having cases lean into gaps. Uh, but at the same time, they had this gap. But look at the case up above it, where my area is up above it. I say this is a, a, it's a game of weight distribution. If you have something leaning into a gap, you want to counterbalance that weight going into the gap. And they did just that. They got the nice, big, long, heavy box on top of that. And most of it is on part of that case in the middle that's hanging into the gap. So more than likely that case is not going to fall into the gap. Plus there's heavier cases on the opposite side of that gap. So more than likely there is nothing going to happen to this pallet. So like, like I said, I just wanted to say this uh, and point that out. Although it's it's very well constructed pallet, but I just want to point that out for our new selectors. So let's get on to the next picture. All right, guys, this picture right here. Uh, once again, if where my arrow is pointing, we got this case leaning in the middle. If this would have been down on the pallet, it would have been a problem. Uh, now you have the same type of case up on end up here. That's all I would have did. I would have turned this case that's leaning in the middle and I would have turned it up on end uh, to fill in that gap in the middle instead of having a case leaning. Cases leaning in the middle of your pallet are never a good thing because uh, then you have to make sure that you construct the rest of the pallet good so you're counteracting, uh, counteracting that lean. So uh, it just makes it harder to build. So if we can get cases not to lean in the middle of the pallet, great. Great construct the pallet. It's up higher. It's not going to be that big of a deal, but I just want to point that out. All right, guys, I wanted to throw this picture in right here. Uh, I don't think it's the person's uh, picture that actually uh, sent this in, but honestly, this pallet is not badly built. Uh, your only downfall is whenever your wrap machine wrapped this, it just pulled everything together, which it's supposed to do. It wraps stuff tightly. Your crates that usually milk come in, all what I would have did, and you had the opportunity to do it, whoever built this pallet, I would have just put bigger boxes in the middle of these crates so there was no movement whatsoever, all right? So you always got to think ahead that, you know, obviously these are a good chance that these are going to get pushed in, all right, because there's nothing holding them. So this cases in the middle of these crates are just too small. I would have put bigger boxes in the middle just to fill out that gap better in between the uh, crates. But other than that, it's really not that bad of a pallet. All right, guys, the next picture I want to look at, uh, you know, I say all the time, higher corners, lower inside, and this is exactly why. Okay, so we got all my blue arrows are showing you that we got this side of the pallet over here just slightly leaning to the inside with a nice solid uh, cases on the right. This pallet is not going anywhere. Now let's come all the way to the bottom of this pallet above the blue box. We got that higher corner and the lower inside. Let's swap those cases around. And now we got everything leaning to the outside. Uh, you go around the bend, you're probably falling. You got to stop and wrap this thing. Uh, that is why it's important to have higher corners and low inside. All right. It, it, right below my bottom arrow, they played it perfectly. And the rest of the pallet worked to that. And then on their top box, what did they do? They have that top box leaning onto a, a case from the other side that's tying it in even more. So very nicely done. Uh, same on this pallet right here. Uh, I got one blue arrow up here showing you slightly coming inward, higher inside, or I'm sorry, higher corner, lower inside. Uh, my red arrow, the only thing I would have done is because we've got this tower over here on the right. Uh, right where my second popcorn is up there, I would have turned that inward. I would have faced that in and then had something maybe uh, 
you know, the, a little gap in the middle of the palette. But I just would have tied it in a little bit sooner than later, like you did at the top, which is fine. If you don't have the opportunity, you at least want to tie in that top layer. But I could have, I, I think the popcorn could have been facing inwards. You could have tied it in a little bit lower, but other than that, great palettes. Uh, let's get on to the next. All right, guys, once again, uh, we got cases leaning inwards. Uh, but the only thing I dislike about this, remember, guys, just because I don't like something does not mean it's right. All right, it doesn't mean that I'm right and you're wrong. Uh, I just found the system out of selecting for a couple decades that I think works, and I think it works out well, and I think other people should adapt to the way I do things. Uh, like I said, it doesn't mean I'm right and you're wrong. It just, this is what works for me. And this is what I think is the easiest way to build your times. Uh, the gap at the bottom, I don't like it, but this person knows what they're doing. Like I said, anytime you have a gap, it becomes a game of weight distribution. What are we gonna do to counteract that case leaning into the gap? Uh, and they did this just fine. Cause what do we got? We got heavy cases. Look at those three big, nice, heavy cases on the uh, right side of that uh, case leaning into the gap. And then we, we got the cases slightly leaning inwards, which is not a problem, but we counteracted that case. Now picture lighter boxes over here and heavier boxes on the side where we're leaning into the gap. More than likely this palette's fallen over, but they played this perfectly. Uh, the next palette I wanna show you right here is like I said, I am not a fan of stacking this direction in this part of the palette at any time. Uh, I know why people do it because they try to equal up with their corner and make a flat you know, playing field. But what you're doing is you're forcing your opposite corner to be small and we want strong corners. All what I would have done is these two cases in the middle where my red arrows are pointing, I would have turned them and put them uh, over here where my other red arrows are facing in. Uh, so, they're basically a corner piece. I would have had them on my corner and I would have had the smaller cases in the middle. Uh, but other than that, not a bad palette. You stack perfectly on top of the bags. And, but yeah, that's all I would do differently. So let's look at the next one. All right, guys, on this palette, once again, where my white arrow is pointing, I don't like stacking like this in this part of the palette, even though this is a small order, but it's just a bad habit to get to. Once again, look at your corner. It's equal with that middle layer, with the middle stack. I get it. But then where my red arrow is pointing, we're forcing ourselves to have a weak corner. Uh, yeah, so if you wanted to do this, I would have took one of your long boxes and stuck it right next on the corner where you have, where my red arrow is, and then maybe then tie it in. Uh, I just, I don't like it. I don't like stacking like this in the part of the palette because if this was a full palette, it would, it would even though you started off well, that I guarantee that corner would have been small cases the whole way up because you would have been forced to keep stacking like this because the inside of your palette is going to be a different level. I'm telling you, it works out well and you did it right here. You did it on your very next order. You got cases facing inward where my red or where my white arrows are and then the red arrows showing the column in the back. Uh, once again, small palette, any higher than this, you want to make sure that you start tying in. I always say it's like a flip-flop. When you, smart with, when you start with small cases, this is how you want to start out. Cases facing inwards and cases facing this way. Uh, when you have cases like this, but if you have really tiny cases, then you start forcing yourself to just, what you're going to see in my last video that I did. All right, my last video, I did me selecting smaller cases. In that video, you see me struggling a little bit because I had to change the way that I do things because I had a really, uh, a lot of small cases. Uh, but with that being said, if you have a nice base, so when you have cases that are all the same and they're gonna form a nice layer, whether it's juice or canned goods or whatever it is, you do this on top of your base. But if you're stalling with smaller cases, you do this on the bottom and then you wanna flip flop and start tying in. Uh, I hope that makes sense. I might actually do a video just on what I'm talking about right there, but I don't wanna hold you up too much in this video. So, but other than that, you did it here, but you didn't do it on your last one. So let's get to the next picture. Uh, the last picture I showed you uh, with those cases going this way, I, I get excited when I get cases like that. They are perfect corner pieces for your palette. And I just think they're being wasted in the middle of your palette. They're perfect corner pieces for your palette. So let's get on to the next one. All right, guys, we're gonna look at uh, some meat palettes again. Uh, so where my two red arrows are, uh, you know, the box right behind there, it looks like chicken or something to that nature. You just wanna make sure 
when you have a big flat box because the chicken there's gaps in the bottom of those or in the top of those boxes so here's the top of the box the contents are down here so there's a gap there so that case on the corner by the time it hits the store is probably gonna be sunken down into that box uh, what I would have done is my two red arrows take them to where my two black arrows are so I would have ran them across the box and, and tied in that corner spaced them out all right, take those two long boxes, space them out, and go this direction instead of coming into the pallet. Uh, you got to use your judgment on these, uh, you know, when you have big flat boxes like this that have gaps, and when you have a bunch of weight, okay? So when you have a bunch of weight, you want to make sure that you're uh, really thinking about cases sinking into one another whenever they're smaller than the box that you're setting on. So that's the only thing I would have done differently here. Other than that, really nice palette. All right, this uh, this one here, same thing uh, about what I was talking about in the middle of the palette. I don't like cases leaning. Uh, that's the only thing I would have done differently. Now on this palette, it was, it's going to work out because we're up higher on the palette. You can get away with doing this. Now picture that was down here, like on the you know just a little bit off the base. Uh, it would have been a problem. So if you had encountered this in the middle of your palette down here. I would just try to make it level. That's all I'm saying. I, I don't like cases leaning in the middle of my palette if I can help it. All right, guys. And the last picture I want to get to is this one right here. Uh, so what I would have done here is that your back corner there that you have going uh, this way, I would have faced them the way my arrows are. And where my white line is, I would have tried to meet up with the inside of the palette or be a little bit higher. Uh, and then you got forced to shove that case in there, which it looks like it actually might have some weight on it and it's sticking out beyond the pallet, so it might get crushed. Uh, you did it up above, you started facing cases inwards. I would have just did it lower. So any opportunity you have on the back corner to face your cases uh, the opposite direction to meet something, I would do it. Now, if you had a second column right next to those, then it would be fine because you could level out that way. I hope this makes sense, but I just think your back corner is a problem. Uh, other than that, your your palette doesn't look bad at all. Uh, you know, everything's square, you know, except for that white case hanging out and, uh, you know, definitely not doing too bad there. So yeah, keep sending me your pictures. Uh, all of Discord keeps sending me your pictures. Uh, like I said, if some of the stuff that I talked about today does not make sense to so you, please leave a comment or just come under Discord. We could have a chat about it. And I could actually have a private chat with you and we could talk over a little bit more about the palettes that I just showed today. But like I said, guys, remember, I am never saying that I'm right and you're wrong. I'm just telling you what I would do differently. And if I can help you on that aspect, then that's great. So just keep sending me your pictures, join Discord, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate everybody. I'll see you next time. Have a great day.